Going into the basement The creepy basement Okay, we are doing our solos right now. I just got up to Rosebud. Didn't really have any crazy feelings, but a lot of people that have been up here have reported hearing things in the hallway right outside the door and having a feeling of being watched, so. All right, so we have a lot of ground to cover. I'm here on the first floor. Well, it doesn't feel great down here, uh, especially alone. It doesn't feel great. What was your name? So, apparently this is where a shadow figure is seen. Yeah, I've got like a pit in my stomach. It's kind of freaking me out. I now have a shot of whiskey here and um, I'm gonna put it into the area where they've captured that photo. I brought you your whiskey. Okay, I really wanna to talk to you. I wanna find out who you are, what you're doing down here, why you showed up in a picture that you're really not supposed to be in. I keep feeling like there's like a shadow behind me. I heard a sound behind me. I heard a sound, it sounded like it came from back in the attic. It was just a light tapping sound. Is someone in this back attic room? Can you make that tapping noise again for me? Yeah, I've got that pit in my stomach. That happens when you're afraid. I don't like the way it feels in here. But I really don't like the way it feels in here. Oh, I really don't wanna go in this room. Okay, oof. It feels like a sadness and I don't know. Why are you still here? Why don't you want to show your entire self? It definitely feels very um, isolated up here. This place is huge and we're so spread out. I keep thinking I'm seeing something out of the corner of my eye over here. And it's just a combination of seeing something out of the corner of my eye, which could possibly be something from outside. I haven't seen anything manifest, so. Um, something just clicked over there, hold on one second. Okay, so it's rumored that a shadow figure walks from this room to that room. Can you do that for me? Can you appear? set up in the hallway so right in this area is where a lot of people have heard footsteps they felt like they were being watched I heard tapping noise in the attic there's definitely it, I definitely get the sense of being watched wherever I walk wherever I, wherever we go no matter where we are it's kind of like people just being curious that kind of vibe um like you're just being watched. I do not want to sleep alone. Oh my God. It's a really weird feeling in this house. It's because you know that it's not bad. You know that it's actually normal if there is such a thing for a house that has this kind of activity. But there's this other part of it 
It just feels really uneasy. It's like, this is gonna be the weirdest comparison ever, but if you've ever been at like a group gathering or a party or have a group of friends where everybody's cool except for one person, that's kind of how it feels. It's like, I'm comfortable with 98% of the things that I feel here. And then there's that one to 2% that just kind of unnerves me. Boo. Smile, you're on candid camera. Hi. Hi. Did you experience anything? It's pretty quiet, how about you? It was quiet, the only thing that I experienced was I was standing in the room and behind me from that attic, I just heard a slight tapping noise. Oh. And I can't even remember what I asked. We'd have to go through the footage. What has felt the weirdest to you so far? The weirdest to me? Um, maybe the basement. Really? Like when, it, when you kept telling me to go back and stand back there. I didn't really say anything, but it just kind of felt a little weird. So how do you feel about sleeping there tonight? In the basement? I'm not gonna yeah. sleep in the basement. <laughs> Get, get real. <laughs> I'm not sleeping down there. Um, all right, well, here's the thing. I was thinking about it. It's been pretty quiet tonight, but... So why is that? Maybe it's nothing that we do. Maybe it's just right time, right place, right people. Which yeah. the only thing left to do at this point that we have within our power is to isolate, sleep alone in these bedrooms where people have had experiences. So we know people had ex have experiences in three different bedrooms. There's Rosebud, there's Holzer, and there's the Hoover bedroom. So volunteers? What do you think? What do you, where do you want to sleep? Holzer? I'll sleep anywhere. Yeah? I'll pretty much sleep oh anywhere. Oh my God, that's amazing. So, I mean. Where's I, the weirdest I'm, place? I'm terrified. Really? So here's, yeah. here's what I think though. Just from my experience of doing this, sleeping in really weird places for a long time, uh -huh. sleep in the place that terrifies you. Great. I know it sucks. No. But I will tell you, sometimes that it brings out really weird experiences. I don't know why I don't have the answers for that. I think but. something just touched my jacket. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, really? the okay. bottom of it. No way. Right down really? here. Yeah. Okay. I, my hand yes. was over, so, it, it, was, it was like something just went, like that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Something yeah. did that. Finally. Look. If our trail cam is still rolling, it might be on the trail cam. <gasps> oh. Then we can definitely see if I was moving, but I, I'm pretty yeah. sure I wasn't moving. You're gonna f***ing hate me. Don't hate me. <laughs> God. Don't hate me, but I really you think you should. You sleep up there? I think okay. you should. It's fine. It's fine. Because I'm cool with I, it. I just think like you came, you just came from there. We were talking about oh, it. You got touched. right near that attic. I don't like that attic. And then um, Kat, mm -hmm. I think, I'll put you in Holzer. And then I'll take, um, I'll take Hoover. Let's do it. Okay, here I go up to the third floor. I'm sleeping in Rosebud. Okay. I'm, um, you know, up here on the third floor all alone. I'm gonna go get ready for bed. Okay, here we go. It's time to go to bed. Here we go. It's a nice bed, but I'd rather be outside. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wish me luck. <sighs> okay, so um, it has been a very long day. I am going to bed like this, which I normally don't do. I usually like braid my hair and stuff but we have been going at this all day long and I'm exhausted. So far, I don't know what to make of things because what happened to Heather seems intelligent, but it's been relatively quiet the entire night until we were like, all right, well, after all, let's see if anything happens to us. Maybe it's just something that likes to catch you off guard. 
I don't know yet. And I can't think anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to bed. Good night. <sighs> okay, let's get Heather. Is that the voice of an angel? <laughs> Surprise. Hey, how'd you sleep? Um, I slept okay. I got up I got up a lot. Yeah. Got anything and I was walking in the hallway a lot to use the restroom. Yeah. I didn't experience anything. I didn't hear any noises from back here. I didn't experience anything. Hmm. Um it is it's a weird it's it is weird up here. I have to check the footage because I just don't know if this was me or not. But yeah. Okay, so we probably laid down around two something. And then probably 20 minutes later, it felt like something went like this by my feet. Oh. But I don't know if it was me. Like, you know how sometimes. Like your nerves. Yeah, how sometimes yeah. you're going to bed and then you like kick. Yeah. Um, so I have to check the footage, but. Uh, but that was the only thing other than that, I was just, I was just out. Um, okay, well, I guess let's get wrapped up and, um, and then we'll just, we'll check out. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. So we are about to check out of Hoover House and I'm still processing what's happened over the last 24 hours. Um, I'm still having trouble concentrating here. I don't know why that is. I keep thinking about Michelle's reading. I mean, she literally drew a piece of furniture that is here while she's in Ohio and we're in Pennsylvania. It can be really frustrating investigating sometimes because you don't always have the full picture. You don't always know what puzzle you're trying to put together, but you have all the pieces. And I think that's part of what we experienced here. All right, your last chance to touch Heather. Bye. She just get like slammed into the door. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm Katrina. good. How are you guys? It's good to see you. Same. Great to see you. So, you know, we've had some time to look over all of our stuff from the investigation at Hoover House. Uh, we looked over Michelle's reading again to see if we missed anything. So I wanted to put in a call to you to find out what's been happening since we've been there. So with Michelle's reading, I sent that over to you. Yes. What? What hit for you? Were there any dots that she was able to connect? The scarecrow man. This, okay, so it was so odd. Okay, and you didn't know this. And not, I mean, maybe, maybe five people know. Because it really kind of startled me. And I've been in the paranormal field for almost 30 years. And I've never seen this apparition. Now, in the basement, you saw that I had gotten a picture of a shadow person. Yeah. I think I shared that with you. Yes. So we had a man working on the pipes downstairs, the heater. So the plumber's like, please go upstairs and turn the heat back on. Okay, I'm on a mission. And I go up. I'm at the second floor. And I turn um, the heat up to, I think he wanted it to 73. So I'm turning it up. And as I'm turning it up. And out of my peripheral vision, I see a man with a hat, kind of brim like this. And I went, and in my head, I'm like, am I really seeing this? Then two people that were staying here, the one goes upstairs and he's like, oh my God. And he saw the same, same apparition. Guy. Without really? me saying a word. And he came down and says, I just saw a guy upstairs with a, a hat on, rim hat on. He had a coat on, bowed down to his waist. Exactly what she said. Do you remember the farm tool Michelle described? This, the hand sickle, yes. Where is that from? Our it's basement? downstairs in the basement on a workshop. What? Yeah, it's the... Oh, don't kill me with it. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> Wait. Was that in the house or did you guys bring that? Oh, no, that was no, in the no, house. No, no, this is in That the was house. in the house? Yeah, this uh -huh. is down in the workroom where the furnace is. So Ira Hoover was a very well-known um, 
farmer in the area. That's, you know, although this house is very grand, he was a blue collar, let's get dirty kind of guy. So the, the hand sickle, that is tripping me up because it's such a specific thing for her to see. Her seeing a hand sickle and her description of that shadowy figure was so descriptive and I don't know the chances of her picturing a hand sickle and then you guys moving into a house that has a hand sickle in the basement out of all the places we could be. Talking about Ira, because he was the farmer, mm -hmm. but also kind of grand, what did he die of? He had cardiac thrombosis in the Holzer suite. And then 13 years later, his daughter, Eleanor, had cardiac thrombosis, sudden death, boom. Same thing afflicted the daughter and they both died in the Holzer. Is, does anybody have current heart issues? Steve does. What's, yeah. what's going on with, with your heart? Well, I had AFib and I had two stents put in. Do you feel like going through the heart issues, has that heightened your ability to No, it tightened my ability is when I died. Steve died in 2015. You died? Yeah. Oh, well, you should well, hear his story. Arrest. He has an what? amazing story of what happened? who he saw. I, um, I was up in Milford, PA. My daughter was living with me at the time. And I was sitting there and I got this pressure in my ears like you won't believe. You ever go down in a pool? too far down and get that pressure. Well, that's what it felt like, really bad. So I went and knocked on her door and she opened it and said, I think I'm having a heart attack. And then all of a sudden she looks at me and I see her face turn like pale. She goes, oh my God. I go, what? She goes, she goes you're turning gray. She goes, you could go sit down quick. So I went in the living room, I sat down on the couch and then I got this pain in my chest, like a blowtorch was on it. So she called 911 and they put me in the ambulance and they had to take me to Scranton which is 55 minutes from my house. They couldn't take me to a local hospital. The um, paramedic said, Steve, I need you to do something. Open your mouth right now. He opened my mouth, he sprayed with nitro because my heart was stopping. And I died right there in the ambulance. Oh my God. They shot me three times on the way in that 55 minute ride to Scranton. I get to the ER and I see the emergency room and I said, God, I made it. And I walked in and I, I saw a doctor. He says, I'm Dr. Greenspan. He goes, I said, whatever you do, don't let me die. He goes, you're not going to die on my watch, I promise. And then I died in front of him. I was dying. They shocked me 53 times. That's why I have that tattoo on my arm, 53. Oh 53 times back, I was dying every 10 seconds. Tell her what you saw, though. So um, they read me my last rites in the hallway, and then they brought me to the cath lab. And that's the last thing I remember because I wasn't here no more. I was up in a gray area. And this gray area, is it's... There's no big bright light. It's just a calming, loving. I mean, to describe the loving feeling where I was at was amazing. You can't describe it. Someone, everyone asked me, describe it. What does it feel like? You can't describe it. It's just something that you know you belong there. And all of a sudden, a thing comes at me like this. It looked like a pod. It was black. And then it opened up, and there was a tall figure standing there. And I couldn't see the face. Just a real tall, slender body standing there. And it said to me, it says, I come to you because you believe in me. You're a part of me, my kingdom. Let them know I'm with each and every one of you. My love never dies, now go. Wow. And the next thing I know, I'm back in my body. And now I can hear the doctors talking. And they're saying, Steve, Steve, give me a sign. Give us a sign that you're here. Like, give us a sign. So I gave him two thumbs up. Ah. So I raised my, my thumbs up. And they were all clapping. I come out of ICU. I thought I was in there for one night. Pam said I was in there for five days. They must have put me in some kind of coma. And then the doctor goes, I'm Dr. Greenspan. I'm the cardiologist that fixed your heart. He goes, you had the Widowmaker times three. Oh, my God. He goes, no one survives the Widowmaker on one. We call you the miracle man. He goes, you had the Widowmaker full clogged right artery with two blood clots sitting on top of that. No one survives. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't even be here. He goes. I don't know what, how you survived this. So you, so you didn't really have experiences before this no, happened. No, not until I passed. So after you passed, then you started having paranormal experiences. Do you feel like there's a connection between you 
and Hoover House or whoever is residing in Hoover House? I think so. I think so. And I think it's not only here. I think it's everywhere I go. At Hoover House, do more things happen when you're present, Steve? Or do more things happen around you? Mostly the voices I hear that come to me, like I got a lady that says goodnight to me every night. So when every time I walk past the kitchen doors, I'll hear a lady say goodnight. And I just say <laughs> goodnight back. So I'll tell you guys something that happened when we were there. It was actually pretty quiet for us. Um, there was one point where Heather felt like she had her jacket pulled. Um, and then there was one point when I was sleeping in Hoover House where it felt like somebody was at the foot of my bed, like touching my foot. Um, and I don't believe we got it on camera, unfortunately, but that's that was my feeling. But what's interesting is when we were doing an ITC session, we kept getting the name Steve come through. Oh, wow. And we were like, well, obviously Pam's husband is Steve and right. we couldn't think of any other Steve. And so it just hearing your story now, it just makes me wonder if there's some sort of connection between whatever is in the house and you, because you know, you had your near death experience, right. you come back, you're now really sensitive. And I, and, and then we start thinking about, you know, Ira and his daughter both had these heart issues that they died from in the house. And is that, does that make it a stronger connection it with gets, you? It gets so bad when we table tip sometimes that I have to leave the room and get out of there because several come in at one time and start talking to me and they'll say, and it's like little kids saying, it's my turn to talk, it's my turn to so tell me. And they won't stop because if, I get something that wants to be said and there's someone at the table I want that message to. They'll sit there in my head and constantly say, say it, say it, say it, say this, say this, say this. And, and they won't stop until I say it. And then I'm afraid to say it because if I'm wrong and Pam says, just say it. And just I have not it. been wrong yet. I, you know, keep me updated on what's happening at Hoover House. I'm really, really curious to know, especially now that you guys are on the historic society that, yes. you know, to see if there's anything else that might connect Michelle's reading or our experiences to the history, or if there's anything that starts happening in the house, that's new activity that seems like it's happening a lot now that matches, you know, our investigation and we can just kind of keep each other in the loop that way. Okay, you got it. Thank okay, you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys.